This is the 90 millimeter F2.8 G series macro. And last week I released a video of my top five favorite portrait lenses for Sony cameras. And this lens, this like mythical lens that I have nicknamed and, and lovingly called Excalibur did not make my top five. And so of course, uh, with everyone knowing and many people throughout social media and my friends and fellow photographers knowing that I love the 90 macro so much, they were shocked when they saw that it did not make my top five list. So in today's video, I wanna to talk to you guys about the reasons why it didn't make my top uh, five list and uh, maybe some reasons why it may or may not be the right lens for you. Well, the 90 millimeter G series macro is definitely one of the sharpest, if not the sharpest portrait lenses that I've ever used. It's not for every situation and so, that actually is the first reason that it did not make my top five list, which is that at times it is too sharp. And sharpness is something that gets uh, talked about a lot. Uh, it's discussed in, in such a way that if a lens isn't sharp, people just don't really pay attention to it. This is the sharpest lens that I have ever used. And so you would think with it being the sharpest lens that it would be the lens to pick when you're shooting portraits. But the reality of that is that because it's so sharp, it could be unforgiven or unforgiving. Unforgiven was a song, right? Metallica song? No, it could be unforgiving, right? So if you're taking portraits of people and let's say for example, they have like 90% of the population, they have blemishes, they have pimples, they have scars, they have um, you know wrinkles, things like that the 90 macro is going to exaggerate that detail. You're gonna see even more of any imperfections that might be there in that person's face. And so uh, because of that, the 90 macro may not be the right lens for you to use. Now, for me, for my lens kit, I end up using the 90 macro anytime that I'm photographing somebody that's in that like five to 10% category that they have great skin, the makeup that was applied looks fantastic or on the complete opposite side of that spectrum. Let's say if I'm photographing somebody who's a little bit more mature, uh, older individual, and I want to really kind of play into the story of their, um, their age and their maturity and their wisdom. And I want to add a little bit of grittiness to the portrait. 90 macro is going to be the best one to be able to do that. So situations like that is where the 90 macro shines, but does it work for every situation? That is the question. In the beginning, when you're putting together all of the lenses that are going to be part of your starting five, if you happen to be fortunate enough to have five lenses, but when you build that starting five, you want that starting five to be able to address the majority of situations that you might run into. And so in portrait photography, uh, those top five lenses that I talked about, those were my starting five, right? If this was a basketball team, they would all be on my starting five, but that 90 macro would fit a very special uh, place on my roster of lenses, which is that sixth man or sixth woman, right? It's that lens that comes off the bench, right? And, and it performs in such a way that the starting five maybe uh, can't do or maybe can't do it as well as that lens. So for me, for those situations where I am taking a portrait and, and I must have that sharpness and I have to have that detail, the 90 macro is going to be the one that I'm going to say, Hey, get off the bench. Let's, let's get in this game and let's uh, make it happen. And oftentimes it is going to be the game changer once it is used and if it's used properly in the right situations that 90 macro is uh, going to go above and beyond what your expectations are this entire conversation in regards to my top five portrait lenses kind of boils down to this this battle this little micro battle right in my starting five i had the 85 millimeter f 1.8 lens and not the 90 millimeter 2.8 g macro and there's there's a reason for that so First things first, when it comes to portrait photography, when it comes to the majority of situations that I'm gonna find myself in, whether I'm photographing a model, photographing a corporate client, uh, photographing anyone, the 85 1.8 is going to be a more versatile lens. Um, it's still exceedingly sharp. It's 
provides great bokeh for those situations where you're gonna be photographing people outdoors. Um, it's kind of that all around good portrait lens. You're not gonna to hear too many people that shoot portraits that'll say, oh, I hate 85. 85 is a great focal length, it's very flattering. Whether you're shooting close up portraits or you're shooting full body, 85 gets the job done. Now the 90 macro, it's only five millimeters of difference, right? So they're still in that same ballpark, they're still in that same category, but the sharpness is different. And I keep talking about that and I keep harping on the sharpness. The sharpness is the blessing and the curse of this lens. And that's why it did not make my top five because in most situations, this level of sharpness is something that I have to call on, right? There has to be a situation where I have to call on the properties that this lens brings to the game uh, in order to give me the results that I'm looking for. But for the majority of portrait situations, even when I'm photographing somebody who has good skin and the makeup is done right, this 85 1.8 gets the job done and it does it at a price that many people who are getting into the portrait photography game that they can afford. It's almost half the price. So with that being said, that is the reason or the reasons that the 90 macro did not make my top five. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe you think I'm nuts. Let me know in the comments section. Why do you think that maybe the 90 macro should have edged out the 85 1.8 in my top five best portrait lenses for Sony. Let me know in the comment section because I'm really interested to hear uh, your thoughts and your opinions on that. While you're down there, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. We are so close, so, so close to hitting 100,000 subscribers. It is something that I've been working towards for a few years now, and I feel like I'm right on that doorstep and I need your help. So please, if you're watching this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. There's gonna be new videos coming out all the time. Um, yeah, appreciate that. Leave a like on the video as well. Many thanks. And listen, if you wanna learn more about portrait photography, I have a bunch of videos, but specifically, I want you to watch the one that is here on the screen. I'll see you over there.